Hey guys, welcome back. I'm Megan Campbell and this is Megan Stuff. So it's been a while since my last upload and I'll get into the reason for that um, in a little bit but for now let's discuss what it is I'm going to build today. So recently I've been playing with the idea of recording voiceovers on my videos instead of having to explain on camera each step that I'm going through while I'm doing it. Now I do have a pretty good condenser mic which gives me really great audio when I'm recording but I don't have a really good way of holding the mic in place while I'm using it. Up till now I've been using a small mic stand which I usually put up on my desk or I try to find a place um, around myself where it doesn't get in the way too much but all in all it's pretty cumbersome and I'm hoping to come up with a better solution for that today. So the idea is to build some kind of boom arm which I can attach to one of the shelves on the wall beside me in my office and ideally it's going to be something that I can lift up and store away when I'm not using it and just put it out when I need to record a voiceover. So off camera I went ahead and I did um, some prototyping. Um, this is all made out of 6mm MDF and basically how it's going to work is one end is going to be attached to the shelf and the other end will be able to uh, drop down like this or a uh, move out even further like that and my mic will be attached to this point over here. Um, I'm also going to have to figure out some kind of way to have it um, swivel on the shelf so that I can move it forward or backwards if I need to. So this is kind of the second version that I made. Um, I did remake all of these um, connection pieces after some tweaking and once I did that I went ahead and I redrew all of these parts in Illustrator so that I can use those as templates for when I start making the actual thing. So the plan is to make these um, arms out of uh, hardwood and to make these connection plates out of aluminium. So just a quick disclaimer, the reason that I haven't made a video in quite a while is because I'm currently seven weeks post-surgery on my shoulder. Um, I had a rotator cuff repair and I've only just recently got out of the sling. So at the moment I've probably only got about 25% use of my right arm. I can pretty much only use it down here but I can't pick it up or move it around at all. I'm a little bit nervous about using power tools in my condition but I'm definitely going to be as careful as I can. So to anyone watching this please, I definitely do not recommend anybody using power tools while recovering from a surgery like this. So with that said, let's get started. Okay, so I'm going to be using some scrap wood for this project. These are slats that I managed to reclaim from a bar that I broke down. As you can see, they were attached with staples, so obviously the first thing I had to do was get rid of those. So next I decided to remove the finish off all of the flat faces because I thought it would be easier to do that now. Now according to the design that I drew up in Illustrator, the width of the support arms is 20 millimeters, which happens to be almost exactly the thickness of these slats. Now, I'm no woodologist or anything, but from what I've been told, this wood is only available in southern Africa. And uh, locally, it's called Dolphote, but according to Google, it's also known as Kiat. So, the first thing I'm going to do here on the table saw is go ahead and remove that bevel or chamfer from the edge. And once that's done, I can go ahead and start cutting the support arms. Now initially I planned to cut these to 20 millimeters wide um, which would effectively make them squares but then I decided to cut them at 15 millimeters instead that way I could get two support arms out of each slat. Now I only needed four arms but as you can see here I cut six of them. I just thought I have two as a backup in case I need them later. I then cut this piece out from my template so that I could use that to mark the whole location on one of the pieces. 
I could then use that piece to set up a quick stop to make it easier to drill the holes in all of the other pieces. Okay, so the next order of business is cutting out all of the connective pieces and as I mentioned before, I'm going to be cutting those out of aluminium. This particular plate here is around 4.5 millimeters thick. I almost never stick my templates directly to the material that I'm going to be using as oftentimes it can be quite a pain getting it removed later. So some people might not know this, but even though aluminium is a metal, it can very comfortably be cut with any woodworking tools. Um, I was pretty skeptical the first time I heard this, but since then I've cut quite a bit of aluminium with my bandsaw and it doesn't seem to have any negative effects on the blade. So I mistakenly cut these pieces out of aluminium because I forgot that they along with the base plate were supposed to be cut out of wood. But I went ahead and I did that later. After marking all the holes I ran around all the pieces on the belt sander just to clean up the edges. So here I found an old shelf lying amongst my scrap and I'm going to be using that to recut these pieces. I could have used the slats for this but uh, they weren't wide enough and I didn't feel like gluing them up to get a piece that was big enough. I quickly sanded it down off camera and then went through the same process of cutting them out. So now that all the pieces are cut out, the edges are cleaned up and all the holes are marked, I can go ahead and remove all of the templates and as you can see because I used the masking tape, it works a whole lot easier. Now I can go ahead and drill all the holes that I marked. Um, the hardware that I bought for this project was all 6mm so obviously I drilled all the holes to that size too. Here I'm just tidying up all the holes with a countersink bit. Next I quickly touched up the faces with some sandpaper. I wasn't going for anything fancy here, I just wanted a basic brushed finish. Now, as you can see, these dome head bolts that I bought have got a square shoulder, so I had to match that in two of the connector plates so that the bolts could sit flush. I bought these bolts specifically so that they wouldn't turn around while I was tightening the nuts. Here I'm just using a washer to mark a radius on the ends of each of these pieces and then I went over to the belt sander to round them off. Now I'm just quickly doing a dry fit up just to make sure that everything is going together properly and working as planned.
It was around this time that I realized that I cut these wooden pieces with the grain running across them and that wasn't very confidence inspiring so I went ahead and I recut them with the grain running along the piece. I think this will be a lot better even if only just for my peace of mind. So now I'm going to start working on the base plate or the mounting plate. I'm marking out the footprint here for these mounting blocks because I want to chisel in a recess for them. Now I managed to find a swivel plate or a lazy Susan if you will which is what's going to give me the ability to swivel this whole assembly. Now technically I don't think this recess is totally necessary as gluing and screwing these two pieces together would probably be strong enough but I thought it would look nice and I wanted to give it a try anyway. The depth of this recess didn't feel sufficient for me so uh, off camera I went ahead and I did make it a bit deeper. Here I'm just pre-drilling some holes for the screws that I'm going to be using to attach the mounting blocks. I'm also going to put in a countersink at the back so that the screws can sit flush. Now I'm just using this base plate to find the location for pilot holes that I want to drill into the bottom of the mounting blocks. I could have probably screwed these in directly without the pilot holes, but I didn't want to run the risk of splitting the wood. Once I was satisfied that everything fit up correctly, I removed the base plate and added some glue. I left the glue to dry overnight and I came back to it the next morning. So now it's time to take everything apart again and start sanding all the pieces and getting them prepped for some finish. This was particularly painful to do with my shoulder, so eventually I ended up sanding everything with my left hand. So here I'm temporarily fixing the swivel plate to the base uh, so that I can find the location for an access hole which you'll see me drill in a little bit. Um, I'm attaching this with self-tapping screws. I'm not drilling any pilot holes because the screws are quite small and the wood is relatively soft so in this case I'm not worried about any splitting. So here is the access hole I mentioned earlier. This is a crucial step as without this there's no way you'll be able to have access to the swivel plate when mounting it to the underside of the shelf. Okay, so now it's time to add some finish to all of these wooden pieces. In this case, I went with a clear matte spray paint. I sprayed three coats in total and sanded with some Scotch-Brite in between each coat. Uh, 
Okay, so this is the shock mount that I'm going to be using. I've had this particular one for a number of years, um, but the mounting tab is way too thin and is definitely not going to fit. So I'm going to have to turn a couple of spacers or washers to fill that gap. I think this material is called Dalrin. It is fairly inexpensive and it is very easy to turn on the lathe. So now I'm attaching the swivel plate for the last time. The screws that I have here are fairly short, so for a little bit of extra security I decided to coat each of the screws in a bit of wood glue before I turn them in. I don't know how much strength it's going to add, but uh, better safe than sorry. Okay, at last we're ready for final assembly. So everything seems to be working fine, so let's get up to my office and get this thing installed. So off camera I quickly whipped up this template just to make it easier for me to drill the pilot holes underneath the shelf. These shelves are made of teak and are rock hard. There's no way I'd be able to turn screws into these shelves without a pilot hole. So here you can see the reason for that access hole that I drilled inside the base plate. Okay, so with that, this project has come to an end. And in my opinion, I would definitely call this a great success. As the voiceover that you've been listening to throughout this whole video has been entirely recorded on this mic arm that I just built. I'm extremely pleased with how it turned out and as of right now I would honestly not change anything about it. This definitely makes recording voiceovers for my videos a much more pleasant experience. I really had a lot of fun with this project even though I had quite a bit of pain as a result of my shoulder but it definitely felt good to be back in the workshop for a change. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did go ahead and hit that thumbs up. If you have any questions, comments or suggestions go ahead and drop them down in the comment section below. And as always till next time keep making stuff.